Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers, and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we greet you with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and ramadan kareem uh, the news that i have is that uh, the lockdown is beginning to be uh, reduced now and uh, uh, we are now allowed to send parcels uh, by dhl only not the normal airmail by DHL, which is more expensive, uh, to the United States and Canada. So those of you who have ordered books from the United States and Canada, I have sent most of them already. I still have a few left. And it's more expensive, but never mind, I'll cover the ex extra amount. And you're gonna get your you you're gonna get your set of books. But those of you who have ordered books from other parts of the world, I'm sorry, the post office is not accepting any any parcels other than for the United States and Canada, so we have to wait. And uh, if you want to order my books, yes, you can still send uh, an email to me and I have to put you there in the waiting list and uh, wait until the lockdown is over. And when the lockdown is over, then I can get a new uh, shipment to come by air freight now, by from air freight from Malaysia. And uh, then I can send you your autographed uh, set of books so you can write to me and send you send your email to me to take make your order uh, and uh, i am very happy really very very happy to be getting so many emails from those who are saying to me Sheikh, it's the first time in my life that i'm reciting the whole quran from cover to cover and also I'm reciting it in accordance with the Adzar that you have given. And something wonderful is happening, Sheikh. And that is a time is no longer moving so fast. A whole, a whole year will pass like a month and a whole month like a week and a whole week like a day. You know, the fast lane of life. But these are people who, because they're reciting the Quran in accordance with the Adzar, time is no longer moving fast. Masha Allah, I say to them, Masha Allah. We are explaining the subject of, of uh, an introduction to Islamic eschatology. And we had mentioned that uh, the most important surah of the whole Quran for Islamic eschatology is Surah al kaf par excellence. And in Surah al kaf of the Quran, we found a response to that famous hadith about the Dajjal seeing with one eye and being blind in the right eye. And we said, this is our view, uh, that the left eye with which he sees symbolizes external sight and therefore knowledge, knowledge externally acquired, the scientific method. And the blind right eye symbolizes internal blindness. And so this is a new epistemology that comes from the Quran, different from the epistemology which has come from Dajjal, the secular epistemology of the secular world of knowledge, which is one eye. And when we turn further to the subject of the internal sight and the importance of the internal sight, how to be able to see with the internal eye, and its importance. We come to that very famous event where the Prophet والسلام, spoke to us about Musa alayhi salam and the khutbah or the sermon he delivered in Sinai and then one of the Israelites said to him, what a wonderful sermon, you must be the most learned of all men. That is where we took it up. And then from the Hadith, we went to the Quran, where Musa al-Islam, he wants to meet the most learned of all men, who is the scholar, the scholar of Akhiru Zaman. It is his model of scholarship 
that is required to be able to understand the world in Akhiru Zaman and to be able to respond to it appropriately. This is where the Darul Ulum has failed. And so we were introduced to Khidr alayhi salam. And we notice how he dealt with Musa alayhi salam, meaning a Musa who is representing Banu Israel, a people with a chip on their shoulders, a people who have this intellectual arrogance. We have knowledge. Oh yes, you can't teach us anything. <laughs> This is, we are the intellectual elite of mankind. And so he, de he deals with them in this way. He says, don't ask any question. He deals with them in this way. In the Galantastati Ma'adawuzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeeb. In the Galantastati Ma'ayya Sabra. Wa kayfa tasbiru ala ma lam tuhid bihi kubra. Should I have to translate that again? <laughs> Tell me. All right, you should know it by meaning by now. And but with the one who is not arrogant, who has a genuine thirst for knowledge, a hunger for knowledge, who shows respect for the learned, for his teacher, and who is humble, this one he treats differently, not like that. Because Allah says, Wa ataina hum wa ataina rahmata min He's very kind. He has rahmah. He's the personification of kindness to these people. And then we went to the event where yeah, Musa is not allowed to ask any questions. But then when he saw what he did with the boat, he scuttled the boat. And Musa was very angry and annoyed. Why did you do such a thing? These are poor fishermen. But what Musa did not know is because he judged the event from only external, external data. And he was unable to anticipate, to understand what was coming ahead. Islamic scholarship in Akhiru Zaman must be able to recognize what is coming ahead. Well, yes, they want us to take the vaccination with the, with the uh, what is it called, the chip in it? Uh, so that they'll be able to monitor us wherever we are. I am not going to take that vaccination. And if it means that I cannot travel anymore, so be it. I prefer not to travel anymore rather than to submit to them and be vaccinated with that chip and become a part of the Jamaat of the Jala. And <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. You have to be able to anticipate what is coming. The one universal currency and all your money is now locked up in that account. You can't take it out. You can only transfer from one account to another. And if they don't like your profile, they can, they can um, uh, freeze your account. They can seize your money. They can close your account. And you're left with nothing. We have to be able to anticipate. So Khidr al-Islam could anticipate. He said, a wicked king is coming to seize the boats. Why does he want to seize the boats of the poor fishermen? Answer, to deprive them of their means of livelihood. You have to have a little bit of insight to be able to read between the lines, to be able to connect the dots. The Quran does not say that. The Quran simply tells us he's coming to seize the boats. You have to ask, why is he doing that? And you have to be able to understand because our Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that there is going to be slavery in Akhir Zaman because he mentioned the slave woman. And that slavery cannot be realized unless they deprive us of our means of livelihood and make us helpless. Yes, then we submit to them. So he, he comes to seize the boats in order to deprive the poor fishermen of the means of livelihood. Well, then how do we respond? The scholar in Akhiru Zaman has to advise and counsel, do not have a means of livelihood which is vulnerable. 
Rather, you must get a means of livelihood which will ensure that you're able to sustain yourself and your family. So land, they can't seize land so easily as they can seize a boat. Land and animals, and keeps your money in gold and silver. These are golden words. Where are the Darulums? They should be up front guiding the people at this time, telling the people, go back to the land and get animals and live in small communities. You don't have to be all Muslims, no. There are Hindus who are righteous people and with whom you can live as a fraternity. There are Christians who are righteous people with whom you can live as a fraternity. Forget the schoolboys who have only hatred in their hearts for the Hindu, hatred in their hearts for the Christian. Forget these schoolboys and go forward with your lives now. This is Akhiru Zaman. It is a tremendous challenge now. And we must succeed in responding to that challenge. And then came, uh, he, he, he scuttled the boat to save the boat. That's right. So we must ensure that we do not have an ostentatious way of life. We must scuttle our boats, live the way the Swiss live. They don't make a show of their wealth, not the Swiss people. Mm. And then we went to the second, which was the, the boy, and he killed the boy. And the reason why he killed the boy is because he knew that this boy was going to grow up to be so wicked that he will become a threat to his parents' faith. There are many who are living like that today. They have daughters who have gone wild. Hmm. Your own daughter who is out there on the street half naked now. And she's drinking alcohol and taking drugs. And you don't know what to do. You don't know what is your daughter. Hmm? What you have to do is do not allow your love for your children to supersede your common sense and your wisdom and your love for Allah. So when you see your children behaving like that, you have to take appropriate action to protect yourselves, even if it means putting a distance with your children. And then came the third event, and that's our subject for today. And that is that Musa al-Islam is traveling with Khidr, and they come to a town, and they're travelers, and you expect hospitality. This is an essential part of the way of life of the righteous people, that they are hospitable. And so in this Ramadan, we remember this. The, the essence of a good person is his hospitality hmm? and generosity, to be able to be kind and generous and hospitable. Hmm? But this town showed no hospitality. And this is what Akhir Zaman is going to bring. It's going to bring people whose hearts are so hard and who are so phenomenally greedy and who despise people so much that they show no hospitality. No, if they could rip you off of even the little that you have, even though they have millions and millions and millions, if they could rip you off of the little that you have, or oh, they'll take a delight in ripping you off. It's a disease in their heart. And this disease is part of modern Western civilization. May Allah protect us from this disease of greed. And so the people showed no hospitality. And uh, this was surprising to Musa al-Islam. But then in the same town, there's a wall. And the wall is collapsing. And Khidr al-Islam rebuilds the wall with his own pocket, his own money. And Musa al-Islam could not contain him. So why did you do such a thing? You should at least ask for a refund on the money you spent. Hmm? And then Khidr al-Islam said to him, it's time for you to move on. As a firakun maini maini, you must move on now. I can't keep you with me anymore. And Nabi Muhammad al-Islam commented, he said, I wish that Musa al-Islam had showed more patience and we could have learned some more from Khidr al-Islam. This is a comment that he made. 
And then before, but before I send you packing, let me give you the ta'wil. This is the word that the Quran used. Let me give you the ta'wil of that which you could not understand. Ta'wil is the interpretation. And so Akhiru Zaman is a time when events which will occur which have to be interpreted. Yes, this virus. Is it a natural virus? A natural virus cannot enter into Makkah and Medina. But this virus has entered into Makkah and Medina. Hmm? If it's not of a natural virus, then it has to be a manufactured virus, fabricated in the laboratory. And if it is fabricated in the laboratory, then they can bring it back anytime they want, anywhere they want, because they have it. So we don't know how long this virus uh, epidemic will be prolonged and prolonged. It's not a natural one, which will have, which will have its life and then it vanishes, not this one. So we can see uh, well, China was attacked, definitely. And now Russia is feeling the attack. Iran was attacked. And, and Venezuela's turn might be coming next. Do you see the pattern? And maybe they also are looking forward to getting rid of President Trump. Does that make me a supporter of Trump? You dumb dumb! Huh? Don't you have any sense in your head? Check your supporter of Trump, <laughs> these schoolboys. <laughs> they, they, do, they do not want Trump in the White House because they don't trust him. And they cannot have the Great War with Trump in the White House. So is it possible that they're doing this in order to try to bring down the American economy and put the blame on Trump? So America can expect they're inflating the numbers in America. Trump can't stop it. Uh, so we have to be able to read between the lines and recognize what's coming ahead. And what is coming ahead is that this virus can recur can be, re, be planted wherever they want to plant it. And different strains of the virus are more dangerous than others. And so we're in for the long haul with this virus. Yeah. And so, uh, Kidal al Islam said, now, let me explain to you, let me give you the ta'wil or the interpretation uh, that. Uh, in this town, there was a righteous man who was dying and leaving behind two orphan boys. And uh, he had some wealth he wanted to leave for his children. And he could not find anyone who could keep that wealth for him. So he dug a hole and he buried the wealth. You can't bury <laughs> electronic money. <laughs> you can't bury paper money. No, <laughs> maybe you might want to go and tell the Darul that for me. <laughs> so he buried the gold and silver coin. That's money. And also copper can be used as money. And uh, he then built a wall over the, the money which was covered. And so because the wall was collapsing, Allah asked me to rebuild it to protect the money. So when these young men, these boys grow up and become old enough, they can be led to the money and they get the money. There's a lesson for this, for us. The lesson is that in Akhir Zaman, they'll come after everything that you have. You have to be able to protect it. Not only your wealth, your money, but yourself as well. In Akhir Zaman, you have to be able to dig a hole. <laughs> and bury yourself <laughs> and put a wall on top of you. Why the wall on top of them? It's not just to protect the whole, but also when they come with their sensors to be able to check to see where is money buried, the wall will protect them. And so you need to be able to protect yourself from the 5G. That's right, in Akhir Zaman. You have to find a cave, you have to find a place where you are safe. And this is why I said, and I'm going to take, not take much more time of you tonight. I said, 
the safest place of all if you want to get out of the cities look for a place where nobody wears a face mask look for a place where nobody wears gloves and look for a place where no such thing as social distancing it's abhorrent to them that's a safe place to make your hijra thank you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh